All right, good morning, everyone. We tricked you a little bit here. You thought you were coming to a monitoring and observability conference, and now we're gonna talk about security. Uh, I promise it'll be uh, hopefully to the point, hopefully useful as well. And, and this is a bit of a controversial statement, right? Security is everyone's job. Um, I'm not sure that everybody in here believes that, but at the end of the day, it might already be true and you might not know it. So why do we think that security is everybody's job? Well, right now, right, across your organizations, Development operations teams own infrastructure that they need to keep available, probably need to keep compliance, right? Things like PCI or HIPAA or anything else. And at the end of the day, are probably responsible for rolling that infrastructure when some big new vulnerability comes out and things of that nature, right? And, and similarly for your application teams. Your application teams are, are building and running their applications that make your businesses money, to Alan's point. And, um, those applications also need to be compliant, and if they are vulnerable or if they go under attack, you're going to have a bad time. The, the environment, the community is not very kind to cyber attacks today. And then comes your uh, 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 humble security team, and they're responsible for the risk and security of the entire organization, and hopefully they're talking to you all already today and working hand in hand, but maybe they have a challenge with that as it is already. So, you know, when we talk about modern production environments and these containerized applications and clouds and things of that nature, you know, whether you realize it or not, the security of those environments is kind of in your hands already. And so I'd like to tell a quick story of modern production security. Earlier this month, on, on the 7th of March, there was a security researcher. His name is Max Kellerman. And Max found a really interesting, dirty vulnerability in the Linux kernel. Um, and, and what that vulnerability did, essentially, is it let underprivileged or unprivileged users in the system or processes in the system write to files that they should normally only be able to read to. And so some of you might, are, might already be grinning and nodding and this sounds kind of bad. What this really leads to is what's called privilege escalation and we'll talk about that in a second. It might also lead to other more nasty things as well and we'll talk about that too. So this affects Linux kernel version, I think 5.8 and above and so obviously there's patches and things. So uh, maybe raise a hand. Who's involved when you have to re-roll all of your production infrastructure? There's a few of you in the, in the room. Yeah, so that might take hours if you're really lucky. It might take weeks if you're in the norm, and it might take longer um, um, if you have really complex environments. And so off to the races we go, right? Ah, we've got to patch this. We've got to roll all of our VMs, all of the nodes in our Kubernetes clusters, things of that nature. But, but why are we doing all of this, right? That's really frustrating a lot of work there, your security team might have told you you're vulnerable to this. It's a bit, of a, a bit annoying, it's gonna distract you from your day job. The reason that you might need to do this is that example exploitation, the, the privilege escalation that I mentioned earlier, right? So let's say that you're vulnerable to this, this attack on your, on your Linux production servers. Uh, there's a file in Linux called Etsy password, and I think some of you are also, again, smiling and nodding your head. For those less hardcore Linux admins, Etsy password is essentially where all the users and passwords are stored for the system. So typically you can't change that, right? But with this vulnerability, you can. So what if I added a new user, malicious attacker, and I, I gave them a password of Datadog, and, and then I set their privileges as root. So now you're in a little bit of trouble, I have to imagine. So okay, so, so we know that there's a problem, we know that it's quite severe. Um, just like all of you, we run a lot of Linux also, and so we have to respond to this not just for you, our customers, but also internally, right? Um, so let me tell you a little bit about how Datadog handles these types of issues. We have a process that we call the Emerging Vulnerabilities Process. Um, and the goal of this process is to detect and mitigate new threats and provide knowledge to the community to help you do the same. And so we trigger this process when a vulnerability is widespread in nature, right? Linux is run in a lot of places. Um, has immediate impact on the security of an organization. Privilege escalation sounds pretty bad, right? And if it's high severity and or rapidly evolving, right? So Max released this information, there are exploit POCs in the wild, things are moving really fast. And so we get together, we, we bring together detection engineers and security researchers and product and engineering teams. And we wanna answer a couple of key questions. What is this vulnerability? What's the impact? What can we do about it? So, for Dirty Pipe in particular, which is the name of this given dirty vulnerability, um, we did a couple of different things. 
First and foremost, we published um, an overview of what this is, what it means, why it might be important to you. But we also discovered that it's a lot worse than just a privilege escalation vulnerability. Raise of hands for anybody who knows what a container breakout is. Got a few folks, all right. So for the rest of you, if you run containerized uh, infrastructure uh, in your production environments, essentially what this means is that whatever's happening in that container can leave that container, can hit the underlying node, the cluster, maybe even the service plane itself, right? So you can leave that isolated sandbox and do whatever you wanna do. Datadog discovered that you could use this vulnerability to do that also. So what did we do? We, we explained that to the community. We published some, some POCs and some things to help people understand how this could occur. And then we went straight into detection mode because like we mentioned earlier, it's probably gonna take you all a bit of time to get patched and updated to make sure you're not vulnerable to this anymore. So when we're looking for this, we wanna understand as well, am I, am I being exploited? Like I'm, I'm rolling my infrastructure, I'm changing my Kubernetes nodes, I'm updating my AMIs, I'm doing whatever I need to do, but am I under attack now? Do I need to focus even harder on this problem? And it's actually really hard to answer that problem because this is a kernel level vulnerability. It's not just as simple as saying, you know, am I running some version of a Java library uh, or, or things of that nature? You, you kind of need to go deeper. And, and so what we realized with our detection engineering and security research teams was that when this vulnerability is exploited, some very specific behavior happens in the Linux kernel. What happens is a, a something called a, a syscall or a kernel level command called splice. Is, is done, and, and this is reliable. And so what I mean by that is there is no way to exploit this vulnerability that doesn't cause this stuff to happen. So, all right, now we have remediation underway. We know how to detect it, but can we detect it today? So the way that we detect this at Datadog is with one of our security products um, called Cloud Workload Security. There are other ways to do it as well. But for those of you who are a little bit less familiar, Datadog uh, has a cloud security platform now. It makes up a, a bunch of different products and we try to help you secure things end to end. Everything from a, a cloud SIM to application security monitoring, cloud security posture management or, or CSPM, and cloud workload security. So what the heck is cloud workload security? The idea behind this is that we have threat detection in our existing unified Datadog agent. So odds are that agent's in your, all of your environments today. And we use something called eBPF and, and really all that means, it's a fancy term, but really all that means is that we get super deep visibility into all the things that are happening on a, on a workload, so a container, a VM, so on and so forth, and we have a really good performance envelope, right? Odds are your production systems are not going down when this is running, and that's not true for all security things, right? Like I've, I've been a security guy for over 10 years, and um, I've tried to turn on things like traditional AV in production environments, and it's gotten really poorly for yours truly. Um, so, so how does this work for Datadog? Well, what this product does um, is it watches for attacks, right? We look at process executions, we look at file activity, and when we see something malicious, suspicious, anomalous, we will attribute that back to your infrastructure, so your hosts and your containers. But more importantly, we'll attribute it back to the service that you're dealing with as well, right? When I said security is everybody's job, I didn't mean it was everybody's job to understand all the pieces, right? You understand your piece, and your piece has security implications. So that web server that's running or that database that you're natively managing or, or other things, right? That's what's being attacked. And so we'll find things like web shells, uh, reconnaissance, so scans and, and other stuff. But if you're looking at this, what you don't see and what was the problem for us was it's not really doing that like kernel level monitoring. How do I know if I'm being exploited, my dirty pipe vulnerability is being exploited while I'm updating all my infrastructure? So we added it. <laughs> um, our, our, our teams realized that we could monitor for that in the kernel. We added it directly to Datadog, the Datadog agent and that agent is fully open source so if anyone wants to go look at the dirty details of this, more than welcome to. And now, uh, as of the latest Datadog agent versions, if you're using Cloud Workload Security, you're protected. You have out of the box detection for, for Dirty Pipe and you can do it with your own tools as well, right? Um, I would urge you to look for those splice syscalls and I'll tell you where you can find out more information about this after the talk. Um, but so we added that and that was a nice reactive component. That's, that's the beauty of an emerging vulnerability process. But you know, this is just one vulnerability 
And if this year has taught us anything is that there's tons of vulnerabilities out there. Maybe some of you are familiar with a vulnerability called log for shell which was a, another big one in the application layer. There's a newer one called spring for shell I don't know why they're all for shell, but so be it. And there's gonna be more, right? Tens, hundreds, thousands of more. This is never ending for all of us. So the question that I wanna ask is, how can we detect the next emerging vulnerability? How do we get proactive about some of this? And so if we looked at that architecture from earlier, where we're looking at files and processes and now a little bit of the kernel, let's just do more before you're, you're vulnerable. And so today I'd really like to announce for cloud workload security, we're adding major updates to our detection capabilities. We can now detect attacks and suspicious behavior across the network events. So things like crypto mining or data exfiltration. We can detect in-memory attacks like a process injection or defense evasion. And like we just mentioned with the kernel, we can detect rootkits and kernel level exploits uh, as well with cloud workload security today too. So what the future looks like is this where we have the full array of events and activity that being monitored as part of that open source Datadog agent. And so now we're adding things like rootkits, crypto mining, more reconnaissance and other things as well. And as I just mentioned, all of this is available to you today. So kernel and memory level threat detection is GA. It's part of the existing Datadog agents as of I think agent version 735. Uh, network threat detection is in private beta today. If that's something that so your organizations might be interested in, you can come talk to us, and that'll be GA soon thereafter. And so, you know, coming back to the original statement that I made that was a little controversial, security is everyone's job, I think, I think the reason for that is that there's all of this that happens behind the scenes that your security teams are doing or your vendors are doing for you, but at the end of the day, the people responsible for the infrastructure or who understand the impact of what's being affected are you in this room. And so if we can work better together, we can be more secure and we can get back to our J jobs and, and have less pain. So uh, thank you all very much for listening to Security First uh, here at the Datadog Denver Summit. I appreciate your time. If you have questions or stories to share, come to our security open space. It's at 5.15 this evening and uh, I hope to see you there. So thank you.